Well, now it all makes sense. Uh, you know, before with the first episode with the slumber party, uh, that was weird, and, and I couldn't really figure out anything, but now we have trouble in lumpy space, and this is where it all comes together. This is where all the questions that were raised in the first one suddenly are answered. I mean, it's like the ending to Lost that we never got. It's like, wow, all these things we were questioning... This is one of the strangest things I've ever watched, and it's disturbing and unsettling, but cute at the same time, and it frightens me. And the idea that I have to watch, like, 60 plus more of these frightens me even more. I guess I'll talk about the story. Um, okay, so, uh, Princess Bubblegum meets with Princess of Lumpy Space, who I'm not actually sure is female, sounds very male, is just this big lump of... I don't know what, and they're like, oh, let's, uh... Did I accidentally bite the dog? Oh, that means he's gonna turn lumpy unless you go into lumpy space and get the antidote from these soft guys. And the way to get into lumpy space is through a frog who eats them. And lumpy space is in the frog, I guess. So... So the, the lumpy space princess goes to her parents who do not look like royalty. Um, they just look like two random parents, and they have to get to make-out point. That's where the antidote is. They get there, but the dog turns into one of the lumpy people because, again, bitten by Princess Lumpy, and that's what the lumpy people do. It's a condition. And... Apparently, he becomes one of the lumpy people, which I guess is like deep-throated valley girls if they ate a bunch of marshmallows and tried talking. It makes about as much sense as anything else. And he, uh, Finn, the boy, with the weird panda thing on his head, uh, goes and tries to bring this sphere, which apparently is the antidote that you have to sit on, to the dog, and he turns lumpy in the process because he gets bitten. But then they both sit on it and they're okay. And that is the episode. I have never seen anything like this. This is like... Like, even Ren and Stimpy, which is a show that I love, it was very surreal, and I just ate up the surrealness of it. But it was simple, you could follow it enough, and that didn't always have, like, an introduction that made sense. Sometimes they lived in a house, sometimes they lived in a tree, it, it just varied. This, at least, is consistent with its strangeness, it seems to always take place in the same world, but... It's just so constantly throwing oddness at you, and it so doesn't care if it entertains you. Maybe in a strange way that's why people find it entertaining, because it's just sort of doing its own thing and clearly doesn't give a shit what any of you say about it. Ironically resulting in it being a big hit and everybody loving it. So... This is like some sort of mad genius formula that somehow they've cracked and made tons of money on. Both trying really hard and not trying in the least. It's the most bizarre combination of elements and elements. The only other thing I can think about to say about it is that, you know, I, I do a panel on comedy in a lot of these conventions, and it's, uh, 
one of the things I talk about is surreal humor. I say surreal humor is wonderful. You know, Mike Python does a lot of surreal humor. Again, Ryan Stimpy does a lot of surreal humor. But the downside is that a lot of it uh, leans towards surprise. You know, that it's the it's the comedy of the unexpected. But when you have a show that keeps going and you keep throwing in unexpected stuff, it's tricky because then you can start to see the unexpected jokes that gets in the formula. So it's not that it can't be done, it's that it's incredibly difficult to do. And to this show's credit, even though I'm only on episode two, I don't think you could start any episode and have any iota of thought where it's going to go or how it's going to end up or what kind of joke is coming. It is that bizarre. And everything in it looks bizarre and acts bizarre and talks bizarre. And there's just... I think because there is no lead-in, there's no setup, there's none of that. It just sort of is. It doesn't give you I guess it doesn't give you a framework to get used to. It doesn't give you anything to be like, oh, well, I know this is going to happen because this is the kind of world it's set up. You know, even Ren and Stimpy, you know, have a setup. They're going to be firemen. Well, obviously, a building's going to burn. They're going to try and save the people, and it's going to backfire or something. Or, uh, you know, Ren's going to a psychiatrist. Well, obviously, he's going to go tell his story, and, you know, he's going to find out why he's crazy. Or None of that. Here. You can't predict anything in this show. Like, anything. And, and it is funny. I I laugh, but it's like that uncomfortable laugh where, like, am I watching something really ingenious or phenomenally stupid or both? I don't know. I've I've never seen anything like this. It is so consistently throwing strangeness at you, but somehow not reaching that level of annoyance, somehow not being like, okay, God, they're trying too hard or whatever. It's just sort of the right kind of strange balance. And I don't know what to think of it. I, I think it's good. It's... <sighs> I apologize, these, these are not very good. <laughs> these are not very good vlog, because it's like, but can you blame me? It's like, how can anyone talk about this kind of thing? It's like, it's, I'm, I'm doing the best. I am doing my best, and I don't know, maybe these vlogs will just turn into what the show is turning into, just like a plate of madness. I don't know, just trying to describe it, trying to figure it out, but I will not give up, okay? Because this show is a hit, uh, it has so many fans, it has a lot of people that love it and love talking about it and quoting it, and we have to figure out why. We have to bring some understanding to this madness. You know what? This is gonna be like therapy. Like, I'm the psychiatrist, and Adventure Time is the person who is clearly insane. And I'm just trying to figure out the method in the madness and why it enjoys the madness and wants to stay in the madness. What is the attraction to the madness while possibly being drawn into the madness myself? But I'm going to be a good psychiatrist here. I'm going to try and keep one foot in reality and one foot in this bizarre, scary realm that has been put in front of me. So... Okay, so, so next time, I'm hoping to have more of a understanding and more of a method of addressing this because I just don't know. I just don't know. I mean, about anything right now. This show has put me in a bad spot. Or maybe I'm confusing it for a bad spot. Maybe it's just a spot I'm not used to. But there's lots more to go. And chances are you'll see me break. But I'm going to try my best not to. I'm going to try my best to make sense of this. And talk about well, what's good about it, what's bad about it. Because I've never come across something where I can't really say... 
what's good about it, what's bad about it because it's not giving me that. It's just sort of giving me what it is and I can't... As a reviewer, we want to put these things in categories. I'm not saying that's good, but it's what we're used to. It's and not even reviewers, just people. This is what we do. We like to put things, oh, well, this is the good category. This is the bad category. And we like to separate things. And that's just, and this show is really challenging that and probably good for it. <laughs> but it's a confusing time, okay? It's, it's a confusing, strange time to go through. And I'm going to stick it out, though. It's only episode two, but I'm going to stick it out, and uh, we're going to discuss this, and we're, we're, we're going to figure it out. We're going to get through this together, so um, I'm sorry. I think these are going even longer than the episode, but I just, I got to figure it out. I got to figure it out. I'll be more together in the next one.